Greetings and salutations, my friend. Not long ago, I asked you whether you're familiar with Tom McDonald and his music, and it seems that more than half of you have no idea who Tom McDonald is. Now, Tom McDonald definitely went viral recently, and he's been known all across YouTube and streaming platforms for a good while now, a couple of years at least. But it is one of his newest single. I don't even remember what it's called, to be honest. Of course it's called Facts. Of course it's called Facts, obviously. I'm so stupid. But it was one of his newest singles, called Facts, that introduced a lot of new people to his music. They call me offensive, controversial. It's only two genders, boys and girls. They can't cancel my message because I'm the biggest independent rapper in the whole freaking world. Claim that I'm racist, yeah, all right. I'm not ashamed because I'm white. If every Caucasian's a bigot, I guess every Muslim's a terrorist. Every liberal is right. And let me be completely honest with you. I genuinely think that this will be one of the cringiest songs of this year. I'm not even joking. This song is an absolute cringe. And... I know what you might be thinking if you're not familiar with my channel and my content. Oh, here's another liberal snowflake who gets triggered by Tom McDonald's music. Nah, not at all. Let me show you something. You see this t-shirt? This here is a lyrics to Brainwash. There's nine steps. Let me show you the whole t-shirt. Tom McDonald merchandise. Step one. Train the people only to consume. Step two, infiltrate adults with the news. Step three, indoctrinate the children through the schools and the music and the apps on the phones that they use. Step four, separate the right from the left. Step five, separate the white from the black. Step six, separate the rich from the poor. Use religion and equality to separate them more. Step seven, fabricate a problem made a lie. Step eight, put it on the news every night. Step nine, when people start to fight and divide, take control. This is called situational design. On top of that, I have uh, quite a collection of uh, Tom McDonald's albums. I like most of them, at least. I think uh, Us Against the World was 100% of the best album uh, Tom ever made. Renegade's probably like the closest to that, and I uh, really like ghost, ghost Stories as well. There's a couple of albums that Tom McDonald that I have in my collection. I've listened to uh, practically all of his music, including his old and awful stuff. So, you know, the reason why I'm saying that this song is cringy, it does not come from the perspective you think it's coming from. It's just, the song is genuinely bad, and it is genuinely cringy, you know? And I'm saying this as a Tom McDonald fan. And the bar dropped by Ben Shapiro, the stats, I've got the facts, my money like lizard, my pockets are fat. Homie, I'm epic, don't be a whap. Dog, it's a yamaka, homie, no cap. Look at the graphs, look at my charts. You're blowing money on strippers and cars. You go into prison, I'm on television, dog. No one knows who you are. Keep hating on me on the internet. My comment section all woke Karen's. And I make racks off compound interest. Y'all live with your parents. Oh please, Ben, just don't rap ever again. Okay, just stick to what you're good at and don't, don't. Like, the whole song started as a joke. <laughs> ben Shapiro is only teaming up with Tom McDowell to make a song and they actually turned that joke into, well, into a fact. Obviously, I had my amazing recording of WAP, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the Cardi B hit, which I gotta say, my, my version slaps significantly harder than the Cardi B version. Yo, slap significantly harder. Awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, I, th there, there have been calls. I mean, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm just going to put it out there. There have been calls for us to collaborate, and I know that it, it would probably be degrading your art for us to do that. But I will say that my my raps. I feel it's an untapped field for me. Yeah. I, it's it's something that you know I've I've always wanted to. It's sort of like my feminine identity as a as a black lesbian woman. It's sort of like an area that I feel is just absolutely, I, I've never touched it, I've never really gone. I know that facts don't care about your feelings, but the fact that this song exists it certainly hurts my feelings. But let's go back a bit, because it's not this particular song that I want to talk about. It's Tom McDonald's music and persona as a whole. Tom McDonald has been making rap music for over a decade now, but 
It was his single Fake Woke, released in January of 2021, that gathered a lot of attention, mostly in US, but also outside of US. I think it's crazy I'm the one who they labeled as controversial and Cardi B is the role model for 12 year old girls There's rappers pushing Xanax at the top of the billboard But if I mention race in a song I'm scared I'll get killed for it It's backwards, it's getting exponentially dumb It's more difficult to get a job than purchase a gun Eminem used to gay bash and murder his mom And now he doesn't want fans if they voted for Trump We're ashamed to be American You should probably love it cause you have the right to hate it And not get stoned to death in public As children we were taught how to walk and talk but the system wants adults to sit down and shut up Cancel culture runs the world now, the planet went crazy Label everything we say as homophobic or racist If you're white, then you're privileged, guilty by association All our childhood heroes got me too or the rapists They never freed the slaves, they realized that they don't need the change They gave us tiny screens, we think we free cause we can't see the cage They knew that race war would be the game they need to play For people to big teams, they use the media to feed the flame Now if you listen to that song for yourself you'll understand why exactly it got the attention it got. And while Tom McDonald already had a pretty big audience around the time, it was fake woke, where his music really blew up, you know? And to this day, I think that 2021 was the best year for Tom McDonald, and will he ever top that, that peak that he reached? That's a good question. That's a good question. Most artists don't ever do that, but I wish him the best and I hope he will. Now, I would say with quite confidence that most of Tom McDonald's listeners are right-leaning Americans. Americans with right-leaning opinions and values. And here I am, not exactly fitting that mold. A European with more center-leaning anarchistic views, but honestly, I think there's quite an overlap between a lot of things that Tom McDonald says and a lot of things that I personally think, that I personally believe. And uh, I'm not one of those people who say, oh, you know, absolutely everything Tom McDonald says is true. Um, no, I think, you know, it's more about opinions than truth, to be honest. Although I definitely agree with a lot of the stuff he says. Not everything, but a lot of it. Music we love make us dumb and addicted. The news that we watch is brainwashing the children. The viruses, riots, and racist conditions ain't problems, they're symptoms of life in the system. Big Pharma doesn't cure you, dog. Cause every patient that gets cured is a customer lost. And Big Oil runs the world. The only wars that get fought are with the countries who have natural resources they want. Pick your team, right or left. Pick the red pill or the blue. You can vote, but even if you win, still everyone will lose. Don't forget to buy designer because Gucci makes you cool. We prioritize material belongings over truth. Get a job that you can't stand so you can buy some cans of food. Go overseas and die for freedom. There's some oil we can use. Our democracy exists so that you think that you can choose. But our algorithms make you do what we want you to do. What's the Problem. Your depressed society has you confused We got medication for you that you'll probably abuse Black lives only matter when they got a corpse to exploit Cause the media made millions off the protests for George Floyd That's called ad revenue, they make cash selling you All the crap in the ads while they broadcast news and the healthcare system making people so broke they can pay those bills They don't even care if you're sick no more As long as you got money you should take those bills Irregardless of whether you agree with Tom or not with the message that he puts in his songs a lot of criticism that Tom McDonald received is that his music is too political and even people who mostly agree with Tom and his views can agree that yes his music is very political and someone wrote a comment on my channel recently saying that they listen to music to relax not to listen to someone's political message as in the case of Tom McDonald, and I can certainly see why that is the case, you know? But is that all Tom McDonald is? Can we just reduce Tom McDonald to political message, to um, political talking points? But I think there are many sides to Tom McDonald's music as a whole, and if you look at his top songs, his most well-known songs, it's all mostly political, but I think it's his non-political music that, in all honesty, is the best type of music Tom is making. A lot of the time, his political songs don't really feel like music. 
it feels more like you're listening to someone's take, someone's opinion, rather than you're actually listening to music. And that's what listening to Tom McDonald a lot of the time feels like. But when he makes those non-political songs, I think there's just so much depth to them, both on a lyrical and musical level as well. So if, if his political music is all you're familiar with, um, go check out Ghost. I've seen things I swear to God that I still can't explain. I've been way too drunk and way too happy been dancing in the rain. I've seen butterflies and babies crying still until this day. And see nothing that's quite like you. Till I'm a ghost, oh, oh, stuck in all my life to you. Go check out I Wish. I wish we were kids again Before everything was on Instagram hey -oh. Things were so simple then Me, my tree, fort, all of my friends Way back when on Beaver Drive When the floor was lava, I could fly hey -oh. Wished I was big like them Never thought I'd want to be a kid again And my personal, absolute favourite, Castles We've all got problems and we all feel alone We've all been haunted by the secrets we hold We could fill our coffins with the rocks they have thrown Or we could build our castles with the sticks and the stones We've all got problems and we all feel alone We've all been haunted by the secrets we hold We could fill our coffins with the rocks they have thrown Or we could build our castles with the sticks and the stones so the first time I discovered Tom McDonald was back in 2020, so about half a year before Fake Woke dropped. And I talked a bit about it in one of my first videos, how um, I was struggling a lot with depression and addiction. And what I said in that video was, well, just see for yourself so I don't have to repeat myself. At the time period from 2019 to 2021, I just ended up spiraling down the pit of despair. I hit the rock bottom and uh, it was hard to climb out of there. And uh, eventually you start to feel comfortable when you're there, yeah? It's like, well, why should I climb out of this hole and be up there and be a nobody? when I can become the king of it's my own hole that I end up digging up and that's the worst possible thing you can think of because you are excusing your own misery you're bathing in it and then something else happened and I came across a song by Tom McDonald and uh, if there's any Tom McDonald's fans watching this video, um, Hangover Gang forever. Um, but the name of the song was uh, Castles. And to this day, I think this is the best Tom McDonald song. And uh, that was life changing. That was the moment I knew I want to do something more with my life than just um, being miserable and depressed. Got a wheelchair ramp leading up to the door. I can see that you walk just fine. Probably hate it because it isn't getting used anymore and you only ever build it for your wife. Everywhere that I walk, see you on the sidewalk, begging for a little loose change for some dope. Probably got a mama and a papa spending everything they make, trying to clean you up enough to take you home. Used to have a good job, used to get good grades, used to have big dreams and he lost hope. When your girlfriend died giving birth to your son, you're the father that I'll probably never know. So let me tell you, if I didn't stumble upon that song, I'll, my life would probably still be shit, to be honest. I would still be struggling, I would be at the bottom of the well, you know, just lying there and rotting. I probably wouldn't be here making those videos, I probably wouldn't be working on a million other things. I would just be doing absolutely nothing and being miserable, you know, and I can just say it, you know, openly, Tom McDonald absolutely saved my life and I am grateful for that. And, you know, forget what I said earlier, you know, about Tom McDonald 
new songs facts being absolutely cringy. It is. It is. But you know what? It doesn't matter. There are some songs of his that I don't like. Um, I don't like most of the Brave and the Brave 2. Um, I don't like his collaborations with, with Adam Calhoun. Adam Calhoun, I think his name is. I just, I didn't like it. But you know what? That doesn't matter. Because there's some stuff there that I like. I think that even Tom McDonald haters, if they dive deep into the well of Tom McDonald's music, they will find something there that is good stuff, you know? They will find something there that is meaningful, I think. Whether you agree with Tom on the political side of his music or not. So, it doesn't matter if I sometimes disagree, it doesn't matter if I sometimes don't like his music, either lyrically or musically, because I'm grateful to that guy. You know, that bastard took, just grabbed me hand and took me out of that well. And that is the reason why I bought some of his albums, and that is the reason uh, why I uh, bought this t-shirt, to show gratitude for uh, what he did to me and how he helped me get to the point in life where I am now. Because I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Tom McDonald. That's why the, this most relatable side of Tom McDonald is not when he makes those political songs. It is specifically this more personal, um, sensitive side of Tom that you can observe in some of his songs. You know, going all the way back, it feels that me growing up, you know, my childhood, my teenage years, were in some ways quite similar to Tom McDonald's own childhood, especially when it comes to bullying uh, that he described in some of his songs. I was always sort of like a, 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 a kind of like a timid kid. Um, I never had like a whole lot of friends or anything like that. I actually like dealt with like getting like bullied pretty like intensely when when I was a kid like especially Lucky You from one of his newest albums Renegade it's all the list of the songs here I don't know if you can see it's the one Lucky You I'm not going to show you the song because this song was released on the album exclusively it's not on Spotify it's not on iTunes and for that reason I am not going to show you the song, instead I would rather recommend to buy this album because it's a really, really good album. But instead I will show you some of the lyrics to that song. Yeah, I couldn't fit in with the kids, I was the outcast. Started skipping school because I was happier without class. Tried to drown it out with fruity alcohol and loud rap. I wonder if those kids are sorry now, somehow I doubt that. I blocked it out for 20 years, it still hurts, the pills worked, but I still can't forget how much it killed me. Need to heal first. Talking to my therapist, I'm afraid I'm weak, I will learn. At least the bad experiences turned it into an ill verse. I remember when these kids invited me to dinner, they poured water on my head from the roof with a pitcher. They could have actually killed me, it was the middle of the winter. I walked home frozen solid, frost bitten and bare. These kids invited me to their fucking house and uh, that was sort of known that they didn't like me, but for whatever reason, they were like being cool to me that day. And like as a kid who just like wanted to be fucking accepted by anyone, I think people get this like Stockholm syndrome type of shit where like you want your bullies to fucking like you for whatever reason. Sure. So they, Acceptance. they invited me. Yeah. So they invited me to their house. I went over and knocked on the door. And they were waiting on the fucking roof and they actually dumped a whole bunch of water on top of me when I knocked on the door. And it was like minus 30 middle of the winter in Ugh. Canada. Ugh. And I fucking, I had to walk home like frozen solid, but my jeans frozen to like my legs. It was fucking gnarly. Now, perhaps not exactly the same experience happened to me, but a lot of similar experiences that makes the song hit home, really. And I think the Lucky You is one of Tom's best songs, to be honest. It's really, really good. And I might be biased there uh, because of how personal songs like that are to me. Tom McDonald certainly lived a pretty interesting lifestyle. 
Before he moved to US, he was a pro wrestler in Canada for a while and he tr tried or attempted his rap career for a while but it wasn't before he released Dear Rappers that he actually got some attention there. Yeah. Just a drug addict on TV. I can't hear another fucking song about abusing medication that I had to take just to stay alive. There's more important shit than what you wear and where you live and who you fucking, what you drink and what you spend and what you drive. Rappers full of bullshit. Rappers just a marketing vehicle for the product that the man wants you to buy. Rap about a full clip. Rappers just promoting different liquors and varieties of ways that you could die. And honestly, I think those early Tom McDonald songs are pretty awful. And I'm pretty sure Tom would actually agree with me because he talked on a lot of occasions how uh, around the time he would just be rapping about what every other rapper was rapping about. Kind of embarrassing, but like I used to make the same type of music that I sort of am critical of now in hip hop. Like I used to make tons of records about cars and clothes and drinking and partying and drugs yeah, yeah. and girls and all that shit like i was you know i was emulating what my favorite rappers were doing in my music which i, I think a lot of people do that when they first start out and sort of like as i the you know the smoke started to clear i was like i don't want to make music anymore that's going to influence people to go down the same path that i did because it was so fucking destructive mm -hmm. to me and i feel like that type of music like if you listen to it that's fine i'm critical of it but like i'm not like don't listen to it just understand what you're listening to yep. it's like this is branding and and, and and corporate initiatives and 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 you know and and, and marketability mm -hmm. and if you understand that then i think you're immune to the, a lot of the negative effects that you can experience from that type of Agreed. shit so um so I would just had this like, you know, this come to Jesus moment where like I had an epiphany and I was like, I don't want to make that shit no more. I want to, in, in, instead of making music that's going to erode people's sort of like uh, morality, like I want to make music that's that's going to inform people about shit and wake people up and empower people. And um, that was sort of the moment where I was like, fuck it. I'm going to make music about the shit that I'm truly interested in, which is not cars and clothes and, and bullshit. It's, it's fucking, it's politics. It's the truth behind, you know, it's Truman it's Show shit. Yeah. Yeah. It also makes you different. And I think that his music improved so much over the years. Um, listening to his very early stuff to his newer stuff, you can hear this evolution from this amateur making beats in his bedroom to a pretty good producer and yeah i should mention tom mcdonald he makes his own music he makes his own beats he plays the actual instrument on his tracks and he sings too on top of that he's not just rapping but let's get to that later before his music really blew up tom was struggling a lot with addiction with alcohol and drugs which led to like a pretty acute stint with like alcoholism like i was an alcoholic for like a long time like i'd eat one egg a day and i'd be like gagging trying Jeez, to get damn. one egg down i was so sick so this 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 whole thing and went, this was a mental thing going on yeah it was like yeah. a, some sort of like acute anxiety depression like just totally dissociated from the world around me like it was gnarly so this went on for like 10 months I had damn. to i had to my ma got like a friend of mine to break into my house kidnap me take me to the airport, put me on a plane, and send me home. Uh, How old were you? And as someone who was struggling with that as well, perhaps not with alcohol, but with opioids and antipsychotic medicine, I know exactly what Tom is talking about. And when he talks about his lowest point in his life, it, again, just like Lucky You, it hits home. For those reasons, his songs like withdrawals. My bones are shaking in my hands and feet. I see my rib cage, but I can't eat. I still wake up panicking, so I can't sleep. I just sit in the bathtub and try to breathe. Talk about pitfalls, surrounded by brick walls. This is what kids call withdrawal. Deleted every number from my phone. I'm staying home. Really wish that I was drunk with all my friends. Or church. I pray on my
are again very personal songs to me and those two songs along with Castles and Lucky You are some of Tom McDonald's songs that had biggest impact on me and my life personally. And while you could say that there are two main sides to Tom McDonald's music, right? The political side of his music and the more personal mental health and addiction side of Tom McDonald's music. But I think there's a third side to Tom McDonald's, which we don't hear in his songs that often, but it's his more silly, goofy stuff. And you can certainly hear it on songs like I Don't Drink or Going to Hell or Growing Old. Again, those two songs were never released on any official streaming platforms like Spotify or iTunes or even YouTube, so I'm not going to show anything of these two songs, but they're pretty silly, <laughs> you know. I think I think a lot of the time he actually likes having fun with those music videos. And while you don't see that side of him in his music that often, you can certainly see it in the shorts that he posts on YouTube. So here's just a collection of some of my favorite Tom McDonald shorts. Hey, am I allowed to do this? Is, is this like cultural appropriation or something? Is a white guy allowed to do rainbow? Am I doing gay face right now? Is this gay face? If I get canceled for doing gay face, somebody's getting fired. My little bean. You're the best. My little bug. My little squish. Oh, I love you. <sighs> hey, idiot! What? Did you take out the garbage yet? Yeah, I took out the garbage. I also wrote your love song, you stupid <laughs> My new music video, Ghost, is out now. I wrote a love song about this f***ing idiot. What? Did you write a song about Toast, Thomas? It's, no, it's called Ghost. It's a song about you. What did you write about Toast for? We don't even eat toast! Fuck your period. When you're feeling sad, all you gotta do is be happy, be happy, be happy, be happy. Try it, babe, sing it with me. Be happy, be happy, be happy. You're grumpy, you're bloody, not happy. I'm happy, you're not. I'm happy, I'm happy. This is my girlfriend, Nova. We've been together for almost 10 years, and we've been through everything together. She's practically mentally handicapped. She farts all the time. She can't cook worth a sh and she's horrified of virtually anything that isn't sitting in front of her computer playing video games. And you know, love it or hate him, I really appreciate this funny side of Tom. Looking at Tom's music from a purely musical perspective, I refuse to say that Tom McDonald is just a rapper and that's all that there is to him. I think Tom is also a producer and Tom is a musician and Tom is a singer, vocalist. Oh, people don't like me for things I forgot But I can't pretend to be nothing I'm not I've been sober and I've been wasted I spent most of my life in between And I've been sorry, been mistaken A lot of his songs contain sang parts, usually his choruses or there's something else people call it in like the hip-hop rap genre uh the hook i think i just call it chorus those tend to be more melodic compared to the verses where he usually raps and you hear that in so many of his songs here's just a few examples they been hating i think it's stupid funny haters fake friends making me stupid money they been Because it's how we survive, but it's scary because we don't know where we'll go when we die. Oh,
I swear they want us in a race for dying every day for whose lives matter more. Whoa. I won't be dying in the race for our government is paid for cause our lives matter more. Whoa. Tom's music contains a lot of elements of rock music and you see a lot of that especially on some of his newest albums like Revolution and Renegade. There's a lot of rock music inspiration on those two albums and some pop as well. His venture into that pop genre is, has been quite new and I think Ghost on like his first proper attempt on that and honestly I think Ghost is a really good song it's uh, my mom's favorite Tom song, so hello mom, this one's for you. Until I'm a ghost, I'll give all my life to you. And when I'm a ghost, I will always be the fool. Till I'm a ghost. Other times you might even see Tom performing more soft, mellow, acoustic ballads like Superman. Unlock my phone and watch the world die. They cry into God while they run for their lives. Blood in the streets, bombs in the sky. Goodbye. I hope you had dreams come true. I hope they see in their crosshairs what I see in you and I hope and I pray that's all I can do I don't understand who is good or bad they don't care as long as you got all your sense or freedom's not for sale which is an amazing song but he did stuff like that even or one of his early EPs, or perhaps not so early, I would say it's like this... Mm, it was this transition from his old, awful stuff to his newer, better stuff. And a lot of people, a lot of Tom McDonald's fans have never even heard about this EP. It's called Therapy. And it contains, in my opinion, some of his best and some of his worst stuff at the same time it's weird like a weird combination of some bad stuff and some really really amazing stuff I don't know how you can possibly get your hand on a physical copy of that EP I don't I don't think you can buy it at Tom McDonald's website hangovergang.com um, you can find it on SoundCloud or Internet Archive and uh, unfortunately that's, that's the only way to listen to this stuff in this day i don't i don't know if there's any other way to get your hands on that stuff so he released a song there called stay down and it's absolutely amazing it's so different from most of the stuff you could hear on tom mcdonald's albums or even stuff like we're already home which is very like southern rock inspired absolutely amazing like I said there's some stuff there that you usually don't hear on Tom McDonald's albums which I think is what makes the therapy EP so unique compared to most of his other stuff now moving all that musical side of Tom aside let's go back to the politics a lot of people um, say that Tom is conservative you know some would even accuse him of being a bigot being uh, homophobic and transphobic and racist but this racist label it people attached it to Tom McDonald very early on ever since he dropped Dear Rappers which is a song criticizing the content in 
hip hop song lyrics, you know, what we are promoting to young people in those particular songs. And I think that one song in which he summarizes that the best is in Dear Rappers, a song he did with Dax. We put women in our videos exploiting their bodies While little girls around the world grab their phone and they watch it They need a realistic role model, not just a Barbie They see strippers and escorts, but no lawyers or doctors Hey hip-hop, what the hell happened? It was power to the people and we like that stuff These days you're promoting that it's fun to be an addict So I'm asking, how could y'all write that, bruh? And let me just say, I think Dax is also another uh, independent rapper that is definitely worth checking out. He collaborated with Tom on multiple occasions and I really like seeing these two uh, working together. But you know, a lot of people didn't exactly take very positively to what Tom said and uh, they accuse him of being racist in his lyrics because he's attacking specifically black community, black rappers even though Tom said on multiple occasions that that song wasn't directed specifically at black rappers, but rather this type of rappers who are promoting this type of content in that music. Black rap community have come out and said that this is just blatant cultural appropriation racism because you're accusing all their music that they produce of being about selling drugs, pushing guns, stripper poles. What do you say to that criticism? I think that there's, you know, there's all types of rappers out there. There's there's black rappers and white rappers and Asian rappers and Indian rappers, all types of rappers. And I don't think that uh, criticizing sort of the status quo of the genre or criticizing the prevalent content of the music, I don't, I don't, I don't agree that there's anything racist about that. Over the last 10 to 15 years, there's been uh, very prevalent themes in hip-hop, you know, objectifying women and glorifying violence and hip-hop likes to think of itself as quite a woke genre. Mm. None of those things seem to quite align with what the the woke mob is standing up and being vocal of again. I think it, it, it's a little bit hypocritical, but... And you know, Tom McDonald's music is definitely very controversial. There's no denying that. There will be people who will strongly disagree with Tom, there will be people who will strongly disagree and absolutely hate his ass, which is not surprising. And you know, even looking back at some of his songs from, I think, 2018, White Boy, certainly created a lot of controversy, you know? You're making me the villain by demonizing my race For things I didn't do and decisions I didn't make No one that I call a friend has ever owned a slave And neither did our dads or our dad's dads Sakes acknowledging atrocities were wrongly committed Is all that I can offer when I'm wrongly convicted I would never hate a man for what God gave him in pigments And I would never plot against him just because he is different I would never judge a human for the cards he was given Or call him lesser than myself because of the race that he's mixed with White people that you hate aren't your neighbors or lawyers They're the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Bushes and Royals They're the people who monopolized the water and oil And injected your communities with drugs that they spoiled Got no patience for Nazis, I think they're better off dead The fighting hatred with hatred making the hate more intense I don't want nothing to do with either side of the fence So don't blindly attack me for wearing braids on my head Hate the people who believe you put yourselves in the ghetto Hate the ones who teach their children you ain't cause they said so Hate the ones who think you're all the same and judge you profusely Cause the way that you're portrayed on our news and in movies And you know, I think it's a very sensitive topic to a lot of people And uh, I can totally understand that But you know, black Americans were not the only people exposed to slavery right? I mean I was born in Eastern Europe, I'm Eastern European myself, and we were held as slaves in North Africa for a very long time, right? And we were being uh, sold as slaves by the Muslims, by uh, Spaniards, and you know, just think about it, why we are called Slavic people. You know, just think about it for a second there. We too have history with uh, slavery. More specifically, I was born in Poland, and guess what? We were also fucked by the Germans and by the Russians there. I don't like to hold a grudge. That's all I want to say. I don't think it's healthy to hold a grudge. And I don't really like this political climate when it comes to race, you know? 
So if someone out there wants to accuse me of being a privileged white person, you should know our history as well. We never kept slaves, we were kept as slaves. You know, you're not the only one. That's why I find it so weird when this American political climate around race is being translated into European reality when we borrow that from US when we don't have the same history here, you know? I mean, sure, there are some European countries that were colonizing Africa and India, right? But a lot of us have absolutely nothing to do with that and you can't apply that same reality to Europe and I think it's quite relaxed here in Norway where I live at least and you know a lot of the time I don't really notice a person's skin color because that's not what I care about you know I don't care about your race your sexuality your gender I care about uh, what do you have to say? You know, what value do you bring to the table exactly, you know? And you know, sure, you can go one way too far, you know, and I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist. There's a lot of racist people on the right, right? Not everyone, not even the most, but there are racist people. But we can't act like there's no racism on the left, but it's a different type of racism a lot of the time. It's this infantilizing racism. Oh, pure little black person, they need my help. I have to be a white savior here. You know, like, who does it help? And even Malcolm X, which I don't always agree with because he was a segregationalist, but he stated that some of the most racist people are white liberals. That white person that you see Calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox. And a fox is almost, is always more dangerous in the forest than the wolf. You can see the wolf coming. You know what he's up to. But the fox will fool you. He comes at you with his mouth shaped in such a way that even though you see his teeth, you think he's smiling and taking for a friend. And to be honest, his statement can't really be well translated into today's reality either because Mm, what do we call liberals today are not the same liberals back in the 60s, let's say, you know? Those are two very different beasts. You can't really compare these two. Like, honestly, I don't think I will ever be able to relate to the people who think that Tom's music is racist. I think it's provoking a lot of the time, you know, and he certainly provokes. But at the same time, I also think his music can be very thought-provoking, too. And a lot of the stuff Tom says can rub some people the wrong way. Don't get me wrong, right? And I don't even agree with everything he says. Sometimes Tom will say things I think I just disagree with, or I will even say that sometimes he says things that are unnecessarily mean-spirited. Now being fat is beautiful, name a thing that you can't do, jumping jacks, run a mile, live past 42. But looking at the grand scheme of things, a lot of the time, the things Tom says, they make sense. There's a lot of truth to what he says. And you know, I could say a lot about the stuff I agree with, but I want to focus a bit, well, what I not necessarily agree with or what I think Tom could be doing better. I think that a lot of the time Tom focuses on things that are not necessarily the source of the problem and I think it alienates a lot of people who otherwise would agree with Tom's message. Tom has been, I would even say, I wouldn't say attacking but certainly provoking trans people in his lyrics to an unnecessary degree. Say that I'm transphobic if you wanna, but one day I'll be a father And I really hope my son don't grow up to be my daughter I ain't trying to hurt your feelings, skin should be a little thicker That's the problem, being honest, got them triggered I'll empower you with rights to vote and fight for equal pay Then have the men turn into women and you'll fight for them again We only dedicate one day to remember our fallen soldiers The men and women who died young But if you come out the closet as Caitlyn Jenner You're a hero and you get a whole pride month you know, that's what sells, right? Like, everybody talks about the trans stuff. Even I'm talking about this shit a lot of the time on my channel, you know? 
but we can talk about it in a meaningful way but I just I don't think you can talk about it meaningful way in a song format that would just mention the trans stuff out of nowhere either in there you know like that's not how you have a discussion around this topic and I think it's the topic that has a lot of complexity you know and in that regard I think Tom McDonald comes from a pretty black and white perspective there you know what I think Tom McDonald is at his best is when he's uh, going after the people on the top. <clears throat> you know who I'm talking about, right? The elites, the politicians, world leaders, um, all those bastards, right? Like, it's not trans people up there that are the problem. No, it's uh, those guys. George Orwell, 1984 was his last lecture. George called them thought police, now we call them fact checkers. Government surveillance trying to catch you, they don't ask questions. Mass incarceration equals capital for cash investors. The system isn't broke, it's working fine. Oppressive and chaotic is how it was designed. They say if we ain't doing nothing wrong, there's nothing to hide. While their agenda and intelligence completely classified. They don't teach your rights in school, you never learn them at all. Cause they're easy to remove if you don't know what they are. I think the elites are real, but they ain't drinking babies blood they're creating chaos so they have something to save you from if you lie to the government they'll put you in prison but when they lie to all of us it's called being a politician the government has always lied it's history repeating but the problem is the schools dumb you down so you believe them if you try to speak the truth inside a tweet then they delete it whole administration satanists who claim they praise in jesus every year there's a new name for enemies that we're facing it's al-qaeda then isis and now american patriots who would have thought those who love the country the most would be hated on by folks who call america home both political parties are equally just as evil they've been working for themselves don't give a damn about the people black white yellow brown humanity needs you because united we stand divided they will defeat you well i just wish he focused more attention on that a lot of the time because i think there's some level of hypocrisy there where on one side tom talks about uniting you know like hey they are creating propaganda so we fight against each other instead of focusing on those guys right and that's also what I've been saying for a very long time we can unify and then I'll go against them but we let them divide us with votes and elections it's all controlled by the elites put fake news all over our screens convincing the right to go fight with the left and distract from the fact it's each other we need uh, divided by race and religion segregated into teams uh you're a white supremacist if you're not I guess you Antifa Let's just have the conversation. Not every liberal is dumb, not all Republicans are racist. The government wants everybody fighting with their neighbors because they know that if we get along, we'll probably go against them. And you know, I agree with Tom there. Absolutely. But you can't be saying that while at the same time throwing shit at the left. You know, I, that's not how you get to cooperate, to unite, to, you know, fight the power. And as an anarchist, I'm not like pro-right or pro-left, I'm all about fighting the power. And I think me and Tom, we're on the same page there, right? But is this really the best way to get the message across to the other side? You know, because I do think that a lot of the time they're right, left, conflict is absolutely manufactured. But how do we get along to uh, notice that you know hey we have a common enemy there and you know the enemy of my enemy is my friend that's what happens through uh, conversations and I think that is something that Tom McDonald's music could be a bit better at I think he could get better at it if that is his goal with his music I think he could be doing it better and this is by no means uh, meant as hate or negativity towards Tom it is genuinely a change with Tom and his music that I would like to see in the future because really some of his best stuff is when he talks about the system and the government you know Tom is a bit of a complicated beast to grapple you know because if you think about the political compass and I do think that political compass is deeply deeply flawed don't get me wrong but but let's use it as a template from what I've noticed, Tom is someone who exists here, but also here 
at the same time. And you might be asking yourself, well, how is it possible? Now, is it some sort of mix of opinions from these places, which would mean that probably Tom would be somewhere in the middle between these two? Perhaps. I think that definitely could be the case. Um, I also think that Tom McDonald changed his standpoint a lot throughout his career. Now, if you look at some of his older stuff from 2018, uh, let's say American Dreams, it very much sounds like a liberal anti-gun song, and it's because it is, really. We're making murderers famous. They kill a bunch of kids and get another from pages. I don't know none of the victims, I know the guns in the system promote the ones who are dangerous. It's become entertainment. We got t-shirts and posters covered in murderous faces. We got movies getting made portraying killers as saviors and parents leaving kids alone at home with guns in the basement. Would you pull me from a burning car, run to get your phone so you can feel me yelling world star? A gun don't make a soldier with a purple heart. A gun cannot protect us if we don't know where our morals are. Students fill the glasses and the graves And you claim it's a conspiracy to take your guns away All the while the family's torn apart and trying to ask Why the son deserved to die at his desk in his class You think taking guns away will save our kids from the killings But you're pro-choice, abortion kills way more children We don't need guns cause we can call the police We don't need fire extinguishers, call the firemen please The system treating you like trash and you got rifles to aim with Just imagine how they'll treat you when your guns get confiscated If you compare some of Tom's older lyrics with some of his newer stuff you see quite a clear contrast there, right? Another example I can think of is Tom's opinion on Trump. If you look at D rappers and what he said there. You're living in a country that elected Donald Trump. You're living in a country where police are killing people every day and all you want to talk about is doing drugs. And, or I think it was this, one of the spoken parts of his Death Threats album. I think it said something like, who are you more afraid of, Donald Trump or North Korea, if I remember correctly. But if you look at his newer stuff, it's a bit confusing. Freedom's dead if you have an opinion, take it back. Fast. People hate the president, if you don't, then you trash. Fast. This is for my white trash, the ones the whole world hates. The ones who voted for Trump, they got labeled racist, but ain't. I don't vote, I don't trust in Donald Trump or Sleepy Joe. Let's take a look at his song Beautiful Day from the Us Against the World album. It's from 2001. Every day is a new crisis. First it was slavery, then it was ISIS, then it was Trump and a virus and riots, and now our worst enemy is fighting the whiteness. Now, if your only knowledge of Tom's views comes from his music, it might be a bit confusing, right? You might be thinking, where, where exactly does he stand there? I think Tom stated it perfectly on one of his live streams, and I think it's one of the best things he ever said. People constantly are asking me, are you, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? Are you liberal or are you conservative? Are you left wing or are you right wing? And look, man, there's fucking idiots on both sides of the spectrum. Liberals have a lot of stupid fucking ideas. Or the left has a lot of stupid ideas. The right has a lot of stupid ideas. There's dumbasses on both sides of the spectrum. Um, I just take what I want and what I agree with and what I feel like is, it, 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 it is best for me. And that's what I live my life by, but I don't give a shit about the way that anybody else wants to live their life. I think prescribing to any one form of politics, uh, or, you know, I think subscribing to any one set of political ideals is just a stupid fucking thing to do. You need to look at everything and then pick and choose what you like from the left and the right and the up and the down and every direction. Take all the things that you like and then take it and move forward because that's the only important direction here. It's not left and it's not right. It's forward. So take what you like from wherever and just keep it fucking moving. I'm not a big fan of, 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 of politics. Like, like I've said in the past, I, I, I don't give a shit if you're... The president of the United States or the prime minister of Canada or the commander in chief of the army or the master of the fucking universe. If you're a politician, I do not fuck with you, period. Um, 
I don't fall in line like that. I don't fucking all hail the leader. I don't do that shit. I take what I like from everywhere and I put it in my fucking pockets and I keep fucking moving forward and just doing my thing. Like that right there is exactly where I'm 100% on board with Tom. Billboard or some other big publication and people want to do interviews and all this type of shit and they're always like, conservative rapper guy, Republican rapper, fucking Tom McDonald. And I'm like, whoa, stop it. Um, I'm not that, I'm not a Republican. I'm not fucking conservative. I'm also not a fucking liberal or a Democrat. I'm not the guy that's gonna wear your fucking name tag around and be like, this is the set of political ide ideologies that I run my fucking life by and blah, blah, blah. It's fucking bullshit, bro. It's, just, it's, just, it's a fucking trick, bro. Like, it's like, hey, here's this fucking set of fucking abstract rules to live your life by. And if you like these rules, then you're red. And if you like these rules, then you're blue. This whole shit is such, a, it's so obviously a fucking way to pit people against one another. So we're all fucking pointing the, the fingers at one another and not pointing the fingers at the motherfuckers that made the teams, bro. You know, no, no matter who you vote for or what team you decide to like endorse, it's going to go to shit anyway. Correct. And then they're going to be like, well, you, you, you chose this person and it's going to shit. And it's like, okay, well, is it a democracy or is it a fucking trick? Because if you give me three sandwiches and it's dog shit, cat shit, and bird shit, and I choose one of them and start eating it and go, wow, this tastes like shit, And you say, well, you chose to eat that one. And I'm like, the three fucking choices you gave all me, shit. all shit. Exactly. From a million feet. That's what this whole thing seems like to me. Agreed. It's like, as people say like, oh, it's divide and conquer and shit. It's beyond that at this point. They amplify the voices that you're talking about. So we divide ourselves. Like they don't even have to cut step in and be like, okay, whites over here and blacks over here and gays over here and straights over here. They just amplify these super extreme voices. Because they like, want conflict. Exactly. They want conflict, yeah. so we're not focused on the real right. issues. Exactly. That's how I feel. Exactly. That nothing gets done. Right. While a lot of the messages in Tom's music I think are important, at the same time, I think that Tom's lyrics can be quite repetitive. I mean I lost count of how many times Tom repeated himself and said exactly the same thing over and over again in his new song. It's like the same material repeating itself. Sometimes you change those lines just a little bit, sometimes change the order, but a lot of the time he's been saying the same thing all over again. You know, it's just the same message, different beat. Media dividing us by colors, white or black. We got so divided, it's black and white and political. Black folks and white folks divided by the news. Fake news, fake woke, distract and divide. You're either right or you're left or you're black or you're white. You believe in Jesus, these days Christians get attacked. You're preaching at the protest that hatred's the problem. But hating straight men, white folks, and Christians is common. Censorship's an issue because they choose what they erase. There's the difference between hate speech and speech that you hate. If you agree, it's free speech. Disagree, it's hate speech. Erase it if it came from anywhere except the mainstream I just want to spend Thanksgiving Day with food and my family Without being accused of celebrating native casualties I just want to celebrate Thanksgiving with my family I don't need your help to understand it was a tragedy Can I just be thankful for my country eating happily Without you trying to guilt me for the genocide and casualties There's riots in our streets and it's just getting worse Y'all screaming defund the police, y'all are genius for sure We don't need to defund police, need to defund the media Who lies through their teeth like big lies, defund the police so that there's big crimes you can't build a wall why does your house have a fence you didn't want to build a wall and now the border is weak your favorite actor has a gate that's like 15 feet i don't think that the system's racist i just think the system hates people welcome to the system everyone's a victim doesn't matter if you're black or white it hates you all it's black lives white lives which lives mean most i swear they want us in a race war dying every day for whose lives the world the only wars to get fought are with the countries who have natural resources they want funny how the terrorists who attack always come from places that are oil rich and have gas 
White privilege getting amplified to reinforce the vision. It convinces white people that they're favored by their skin and black people getting angry because they're told they're treated different. So the conflict is between us and never with the system. Let tell blacks they're disadvantaged, tell whites they got white privilege. What a brilliant way to reinforce the vision. If whites believe they have it easy, they will never help you fight the system. Pretty quick, we'll make you stupid with curriculums at school. And if the classroom doesn't do the trick, we'll make you watch the news. The government has always lied, it's history repeating. But the problem is the schools dumb you down so you believe them. Our democracy exists so that you think that you can choose. But our algorithms make you do what we want you to do. Distort your worldview with an algorithm that changes based on propaganda curated for your engagement. Call me conservative or liberal, Republican or Democrat. I'm somewhere in the middle, but y'all don't know what to do with that. I am not Republican. I am not a liberal. Why the hell can I just be American without getting political? And I know that Tom has the ability to evolve further from that, but at this point, I think this is one of the weakest sides of his music that he should be working a bit more on. And while like I said, I agree with a lot of the stuff. Tom says sometimes he would say something that is just so logically inconsistent that I just can't help but notice it because it stares in your face like right away. And I'm thinking, did he really say that? For example, let's take a look at this line from Sheeple, one of his 2022 singles. Trump supporters labeled as the racist, but they can't be. Lincoln was Republican, and that's who ended slavery. Now, let me be clear. I don't think that all Trump supporters are racists. And yes, it is a fact that Lincoln ended slavery and Lincoln was Republican, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But the problem I have here with, you know, from a purely logical standpoint is that, well, you can't accuse Trump or Trump supporters of being something because that's not what Lincoln was, and Lincoln was a Republican. Now, the only possible world in which that will be a logically sound statement if it was the world in which every single Republican was just like Lincoln, which is obviously not the case. Republicans are much, very much complicated people, just like Democrats, you know? Um, it's not like you have a pers type A person and type B person. I don't like the simplification. The simplification what actually creates this political split there, you know. We need to treat people as complex individuals first and foremost. And while Lincoln was responsible for ending slavery, that does not mean that Republicans can't be racist, whether they're Republican president nominees, Republican politicians, or Republican voters. And again, the same can be said of Democrats. It'll be sort of like saying, I don't know, let's take white guys. Yo, Charles Manson couldn't possibly be a bad person. Bono, he's, he's a white man, and he donates money to the charities. Everybody loves Bono, right? <laughs> um, guys, right? You know, little things like that that bother me sometimes. Where I think Tom really shines is those few political songs he has that focus on a specific subject, a specific topic. And some of the best examples I can think of, three examples specifically, is Cancer, a song which he focuses on the uh, greed and medical industry. Everybody knows someone who's sick. 40% will get cancer. Only half's gonna live. Your mom and your dad and your sister stand inside a room. And someone won't survive it. Do you hope it isn't you? I swear that cancer has a cure, but they're refusing to make it. They've done like 40 years of research, 90 billion in donations. We've been running for the cure and wearing ribbons for ages. Why are people still going through radiation? It's crazy. Hundred billion dollar industry, they can't afford to end it And nobody wants to die, our only option is to spend it We'd give anything to stick around for just another second Give a fortune to the doctors who promise they can extend it The profits are astronomic, the hospitals and the clinics Are filling coffins with dollars, it's awful, let's just admit it We're all human, we'll keep fighting cause it's how we survive But it's scary cause we don't know where we'll go when we die The System, which is a song in which Tom pretty much lists different ways in which the system screws us over and divides us and how it's all the part of the plan great song 
one of my favorites. And I'ma give you borders, they're imaginary lines. If you cross them, go to war and win when everybody dies. And I'ma give you money that you'll value more than life. And let the 1% have everything while you fight to survive. And then I'll give you politics, I'll call it left and right. And while you divide yourselves, I will conquer both the sides. Can't you see? I'm the system, my whole purpose is divide. What you choose will never matter because everything is mine. And dirty money. Again, this one's a bit more loose, but a lot of the time it focuses on the corruption in the media, in the government, etc, etc. Black lives only matter when they got a corpse to exploit. Cause the media made millions off the protests for George Floyd. That's called ad revenue. They make cash selling you. All the crap in the ads while they broadcast news. Ooh, the network full of liars got investment capital and segment sponsored by Pfizer. And the freedom fighters, I feel like the left just plans them to infiltrate the right. It's extensive planning. Then it happens overnight. It's impressive branding. Make a million off a of shirts that say let's go branding. It's a cash grab. Everyone's a lab rat. Amazon made billions of dollars from sanitizer and black masks. When Russia launches rockets, we condemn them. But there's evidence a U.S. politician owns the screws they're assembled with. Ain't no war on drugs. It's economic. You make money off an inmate, every jail cell is profit. Our prisons are privately owned, illegal marijuana just mean kids smoking weed turn the dollars in their pockets. Now those three songs are absolutely brilliant and every time I'm hearing this, I'm thinking, Wow, I want more of this Tom. I really want more of this because this, this is fucking awesome. And I said that a lot of the times listening to his political songs doesn't really feel like listening to music But what I think is the best thing about those songs is that they provide an opportunity to have discussion Okay, let's say you have two friends or family members with more or less opposing political opinions I think showing someone a Tom McDonald song and just going through it, you know, bit by bit, talking about every line, sharing those opinions, you know, what do you agree with, what do you disagree with, I think it creates amazing opportunity for conversations and discussions between people and I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of people out there who uh, do share those Tom McDonald songs with their friend that they disagree with and have a discussion around it and I think that's the best thing about Tom's political music, to be honest. Even though from a musical standpoint, a lot of them are really not as great as some of his other stuff. But I can't say it is not thought-provoking, at least on the surface level. And while I do think it is thought-provoking, I wouldn't say it is so on a deeper level, like this is not some deep political philosophy, you know, but I think it's a good summary of what is going on in the world, you know, a lot of the problems we are facing. Now, if you want me to, in the future, I could make a video in which I'll do a line-by-line -line breakdown of Tom McDonald's uh, perhaps the best political song and the one that I agree with the most, it being the system. Anyway, I gotta go and water me dog, so uh, I will see you in the next video and you take good care of yourself in the meantime and I'll see you soon. Ciao.